guys i hope everybody's having a fantastic day whether you're watching this in the morning in the afternoon or in the evening i'm glad you're here today we've got another little take on my fixed blade connection connection collection um kind to look at like i did with my folding tactical blades i'm going to look at my top 10 Fixed blade tactical blades, keeping in mind that tactical, when you look it up, has a military fighting, breaching, multi-purpose tool that can be used in hard environments. Some of those knives in my collection are going to fit that, and then some of these are going to be more designed for what I consider city tactical or urban EDC tactical type of uses. But starting with number 10, really starting with the channel members, thank you, thank you, thank you. I appreciate each and every one of you. And anyone who comes through to watch my Knife and EDC content, I appreciate you. Thank you. I'm glad you're here. If you're so inclined, if you'll hit that um, subscription and that bell notification icon, it'll really help me out. And maybe Tippy will take off and not give us a hard time. So the first knife is a custom, unique knife, crafted out of S35VN by my brother, Jason Brown. It's not a, what would I call it? It's not a traditional looking knife, but that's what makes it kind of special from a defense standpoint. This knife has the JKL handle that fits my hand perfectly. This first hole here and the second hole really tie in and retain that sheath. You've got this little reverse slisher that could be a wire cutter here. It could also be a hook if you had to stick this into something soft. So when I look at a tactical knife that's going to be carried on my side as a fixed blade and I think of ways I could put it into service and um, deter any type of threat, I can see this custom J-Cal that when he first showed it to me and I thought it was just kind of a unique knife, I did not think about the utilitarianness of this knife. After carrying it for a while, I can definitely see what that would be. Plus, it cuts very good, gets into packages and does some of the other things I like. But coming in at number 10, we've got the J-Cal. We'll call this the, uh, the Street Skewer. Moving on, we come to another knife that I've shown several times, and in my carry, this would be considered a larger size knife, not necessarily in blade length, but in hand grip, jimping in all the right places, very, very good edge grind on this knife. This is Rex 45, it is super slicey. I upgraded the grips from the checker grips to the swell grips. I like it better in a blade out grip, but for a poachy, punchy grip, fantastic. For a deterrent grip, also equally fantastic. And should you have to break it in around the campfire or the campsite, the Guardian 3 is a small little knife that really packs a big punch. So moving on, we come to one of my first TKL knives, which you're going to see a theme, who's John's most carried tactical fixed blades. Well, it really comes down to the company who I think a lot of, TKL, Tim and Suzanne Kell over in Georgia, and the knives that they make. For example, this is a small to medium size fixed blade called the Raider. The Raider is an 80 CRV2 and it's treated with a nitride finish that gives it another, I want to say, 40, 50 HRC points. It's the same material that they use to treat the interiors of pew pews and the moving parts of pew pews so it keeps corrosion down to minimalist keeps scars down even though it looks tumbled that's the finish and it just really preserves the integrity of the knife um, you've got great bolted on very ergonomical handles 
everything you need in a knife and nothing you don't. It's really a no frills, um, small, tactical, poker, jabber, heaven forbid, thrower if you needed to. But this is the TKL um, Raider. I wear it on my belt, Pinnock style, and I love this knife. And we will move on. So coming on, we are at number number seven, and this is going to be the smallest representation in my tactical knife collection, so to speak. And this is a tactical knife, guys. So is my little mini that I will typically wear if I'm wearing a dress shirt in this Kydex sheath and just wear them in my pocket like it was a ballpoint pen. The other way that I wear these quite often is I've got titanium chains for them. I will link a titanium chain, keep it pretty short, and wear it under my shirt where I can reach up under my shirt and grab it and pull it loose. It'll also hold a small ulti clip, canter it back a little ways, and you can mount it in your pocket. To me, it's thin enough to work in the shirt pocket, in a coat pocket, or in a neck knife situation. This knife is perfect, as is the mini. I'll pick the standard because it's a little bit longer. When I say longer, depending on how far you get back on that grip and how piercing your punches have to be, you've got this nice razor sharp Tonto. This knife not only works as a slicer, a stabber, a cutter, a defensive tool, um, and uh, what's the best way to call it? A covert, maybe a gray man tool to where someone wouldn't even know you had a tool until they had caused enough corruption that you had a situation to where you could neutralize that situation. I could see that being very much a, uh, an asset in a situation like that. Great little, little implement here, a little banger. And it's coming in, I think, at number seven we saw. And this is the Hurricane Razor by Amsler Tools and S35VN. Moving on, we come to number six. And number six is even a little bit larger TKL. This particular one I carry on my belt, on my back, scout style. And this is the Outer, Limits, Outer Limitless Accomplice. This is the largest TKL I have in my collection, but it is large in all the right ways. It has a very small carry package. So if I wanted to mount this on ulti clips and clip it in my pocket, I could. If I wanted to wear this just traditionally, horizontally on my belt, I run my belt through there, I could. If I wanted to run it with a couple of loops, loop them around, put it through my belt, I could. So I've got plenty of carry options, that wonderful push off on the Kydex sheath, and then I've got this very thick, swedged, clip point, ADCRV to thick, door breaching, body breaching, defense knife, tactical knife, military knife, special forces knife, a knife that with any doubt that this would not be a good self-defense knife or a good tactical knife, I would say out of the knives I have even coming up in front of this list because they suit my personal carry style maybe a little better, the Outer Limitless Accomplice is the top dog for the job. If you drop me into maybe outside the city where I wasn't as comfortable with my surroundings, I'm going to grab this knife. Outer Limitless Accomplice, amazing knife, as are every other TKL knife that I've experienced. So moving on, we come to what I consider a finesse cutter or a stabber or a tippy. Sorry, guys. Keep it moving, girl. So this is a much thinner knife. I wouldn't consider this a breaching or a prying knife, what I would consider it as is a self-defense knife, as a knife that 
You could also fillet sushi with. But this is the MAG-10 Knife Works, MAG-10 USA, the maker's Colin McGuire. This is his Wicked Street Warncliffe called the EDW. This knife is thin. It's got very, very, very sharp edge. It's in 154 CM. And I see this knife as a knife of last resort if I had to have it in my pocket and I had to fight off a group of Slurpee thieves, this knife would definitely leave some air holes, and it would be one that I would not want to be on the bad guy side of. So it might not be as thick, it might not be as breachy, but by God, it's intimidating, it's effective, it's sharp, and it will cut. And it will cut soft material very well. So coming in at number, I think we said that was five, we have got the Colin McGuire Mag-10 Knife Works EW, EDW, which brings us to another small knife in the collection. And this is another custom by Jason Grant. And this is a neck knife. This is a neck knife that I purposely have fitted with a leather strap. It does have a release here in case somebody wanted to sneak up behind me and choke me. I don't think that would happen because I'd have another knife to where I could cut the sheath loose, draw the knife, and start sticking it in like cracked up monkey beating a snare drum mode into somebody's neck. So this knife is what I consider kind of a my city spear or little dart. So it disappears under my clothes. I can drop it in my pocket because the sheath is so tight. You've got this nice ground ultim handle you've got this black wash blade with this breachy pryy slicey i mean if you could feel the bite on that edge and it's so thick i cannot imagine this little knife either striking you across the forearm striking you across the face striking you across the chest worsely being plunged into you in little inch and three quarter increments because I can tell you that the wounds that this knife being so thick will leave would be quite gaping. It is by no means a slicer or a finesse cutter. It is a slurpee saver guys and it comes in for me really high up because it spends a lot of time around my neck. I've never had to use it in that situation but I've also wondered what that situation would look like and I never doubt the fact that I wish I had a larger a larger knife in my carry. So that is the Jason Grant J Cal Mini which brings us to number three. Tippy. You're gonna have to move sweetheart. Keep it moving. Number three is an awesome knife from T Cal. Probably my favorite because it comes highest on the list. I did not put the Piranha on the list, the knife that I carry the most, because it is a smaller knife. But I did put probably the second smallest. This is the T, um, the T Kel Combatant. This little knife is to me an absolute hard use, door breaching, body breaching, defensive fender offer, slicer food prepper, can opener, feather sticker, you name it. This knife is up for the challenge. Made in the USA. You've got t -Kale here. You've got um, I can't read that. There's something on the spine that means something that I should be able to read. I want to say this is an either ABEL or ADCRV using the same nitrite coating to give it that extra HRC and that extra wear resistance. But guys, the way this fits my hand, the way the same Scout Carry sheath, this one clips down so I can clip it to my pants or through my belt, works very, very well. I can also turn this should I want to, 
and have it run vertically, which I don't. <clears throat> and I've also thought about outfitting it with a deep concealment clip or with an ulti clip. But again, guys, absolute banger. And this is the TKL Combatant uh, hard, hard use tactical knife that I would be honored to have on my belt or on my body when I needed it. Which brings us to number two. And guys, this is not a new knife, but it is going to be. And this is a new carrying method. This is the T. Denny Apprentice. I kind of call it my micro spear in an Oak City leather sheath. So I've been talking to Tyler. This particular run was a V1 of the Apprentice. And ver, uh, my car to, vintage my car to carbon or vintage caramel micarta handles and then it's got an acid washed magna cut blade treated at 64 super super thin amazingly slicey you could throw it as a throwing knife you could walk up and you could easily inject it into someone's soft matter if they were causing you a threat because it is plenty of long plenty long to get a full grip you've got a poon so if you're talking about these type of moves these defensive moves it's going to come in handy if you flip it over choke up on it if you've got a little hand like me you could really crank down and that finger is going to keep your that finger or that thumb and the choil is going to keep you from running up on that blade super light super minimalistic conceals in the pocket like a dream i've got another one coming this week that tyler just finished for me with orange g10 handles it's a gen 2 and it has a satin i think it's crew wear with the satin blade i'm super super stoked um, to get it in and have another apprentice, but I think it's not only a great EDC knife that lends itself to package opening and the normal things I do with EDC, but it's also a great knife if you get yourself in those tactical type situations where you want something a little bit more uh, meaty. Speaking of a little bit more meaty, coming in at number one, as should be no surprise, is the Dustin Driver Splinter. Comes with the mag or a um, Kydex sheath with some loops that were put on it by Dustin. The retention is off the chain. I wear it on my belt, right to the right of my buckle, so it comes right across my med section. It deploys like a dream. Has a full neutral handle with a very pronounced choil. Has a very thick brooding blade that comes down to a sharp tip a splinter digger if you will it's got this tall flat ground blade of magna cut the entire tang blade and everything is magna cut let me do a quick cut so yeah the um Driver Defense Splinter was the number one knife that I knew was going to be in Nashville because I saw it on his Instagram page that I wanted. And then I saw that Colin McGuire was also going to be at Nashville. Those were two knives I wanted. So my entire knife budget was tied up and finding out what kind of deals I was going to be able to get on these two knives. But guys, I am so glad I did. They are fantastic knives. As a matter of fact, your tactical knives and top tactical knives, depending on what you carry in your collection, may be so much different than mine, and that is okay. Again, for me, I'll give you my definition. A tactical knife is a knife that I look at, and I think, okay, if I'm carrying this on my hip or in my pocket, and the proverbial shit hits the fan, I don't have a pew pew, my life is at danger, would I feel comfortable trusting my life to one of these blades? And the answer is, in all cases, 
because I believe a lot in fate and a lot in adrenaline and a lot in good versus evil. So, yeah, I would pretty much take on anyone causing trouble with any one of these knives and I would go with them or go at them as a cracked up banny monkey because I do not believe in waiting for someone to stab me first. I kind of assess the situation, read a room, find my escape points, find my trouble spots, find out my best call to action to put minimum people in risk, and then, baby, it is all on, like Donkey Kong. It becomes um, reactionary then, I guess you'd say. But guys, thank you so much. And I know y'all can picture Javon running around shanking people with knives. That's not how it works. I just play the scenarios out in my head. Hopefully I'll be hoping I will be more ready should I ever have something as shitty as hap like that has happened. But anyway, I love each and every one of you. Thank you for stopping by. I hope you find the content enjoyable and worth your time. I ask, I pledge, and I pray that you'll look out for the guy or gal to your left. That you'll look out for the guy or gal to your right. That you'll look out for each other. Go forward with love in your heart. Choose debate over hate. Till 2024, guys. I'll see you next year. Peace. Might see you later this afternoon, but we'll call it next year. I love you all. Peace.